It's getting rather heated over there. <laughs> they take it all very seriously, don't they, this sport? Well, I just don't understand it. It's just not cricket, is it? Oh, cheap. <laughs> oh. This is actually really good. Well, thank you for sounding terribly surprised that I should have a modicum of talent. <gasps> Hang on a minute, Bill. He's joined your missus again. <laughs> Why are you wasting your time delivering letters when you can draw like this? Yeah, imagine how much money you could make doing portraits of married women. <laughs> He's losing it again, Alfie. Oh, come on, Joe! <laughs> At least try to get a bit of bat on it! <laughs> it's that big wooden thing in your hand! <laughs> Top tip, Howie. I'll try to remember that when I go in. Is that Mr Brown umpiring today? Uh, yes, Malcolm's much better now. <clears throat> Getting nervous yet, Joe? No. Been out for nothing in your last two games. Still, third time lucky they say. Just give it a rest, will you? A lot of wasps around this time of year. Great big ones as well. Can you hear that? Good boy, kid. You're up, Bill. Go on, Bill. I'll deal with you later, Kenny. Hard lines, old chap. Oh, watch out for Ernie, he's a sly bugger. Well done, Joe. You steadied the ship again. <laughs> Very funny, Howie. Good shot. Oh. Yeah. See, that's how you do it, Joe. Why are they offering you two? Thanks, Kenny. Those drawings are going to get you into trouble, Kenny. I mean, why don't you catch one of my finer moments? I thought you did quite nicely. Wouldn't mind one of those for my living room, Kenny. Quite, Howie. What's wrong with Danny Boy? We're going to war. What? We're going to war. What? Where is it? What? What's it say? Something, Alfie. This is me. Finished your post round early this morning, Edward. I thought you'd be busier than ever at the moment. Well, they've got us delivering letters to ourselves now. Oh, I had, uh, had one myself this morning. Yes, encouraging men of the uh, postal service to sign up. The post office rifles. Where will that leave us if all the postmen sign up? How about Joe's pigeons? Joe's pigeons? Oh, he's got about a dozen of them. No sense of direction, though, those birds. So you may experience something of a delay if you're awaiting a response. Well, don't you think about signing up to the post office rifles, Mr Kenneth? I quite like my letters arriving on time. And I don't think that Joe's pigeons and I share sufficient common interest to hold a conversation. They're smarter than you think, Mrs Peters. Good morning, Joseph. <laughs> Howard. Hard morning at Brookfield, boys. It's a good time of year to be working in the gardens. Poppies are blooming. <laughs> Well, you don't seem too happy about things, Joe. Claude's struggling with his lame hind leg. It's funny, there's always enough money to be able to restock the wine cellar, but I've had to ask her ladyship three times to call out the vets, and three times she said she'd get onto it. It's bloody gentry for you. Oh, sorry, Francis. Oh, it's quite all right. I happen to agree with you. Well, I'll say good day.
Put your foot in it there, Joe. I always forget. I wouldn't worry too much about it. She's one of us, is Francis. <laughs> Eat your potatoes, May. They taste dry. Well, we're going to have to make do with what we've got. We don't know what's going to happen from now on. Well, I'm sure if the Kaiser makes it this far, I'll be sorry I didn't eat my dry potatoes. They do say an army marches on its stomach, so if all else fails, we can bombard the enemy with mother's potatoes. Hmm, you've got a cheek, the both of you. I suppose you won't be wanting my dry bread pudding then. Well, I wouldn't go that far, Mother. We're, we're just teasing you. Hmm. You need to eat up your lunch. You need your strength. Your Uncle John will be wanting you down the farm a lot more, what with men signing up and leaving the villages. I just don't understand it, Mother. Why are men signing up to go and fight? I wouldn't go unless I had to. Somebody needs to show the enemy that we won't be beaten. Yes, well, I'm just glad that that somebody isn't you, Danny. My boy's got more sense. Maybe you should join up, Danny. I'm sure that the childlike face of my brother tearing towards them, brandishing a bayonet, would have the Germans in full retreat in no time. There's more to it than brandishing a bayonet, May. Uncle John reckons I'd make an excellent marksman, given how good I am with a hunting rifle. Well, maybe I'll be having words with Uncle John. You don't need any encouragement from Uncle John, Danny. You're very young. You'll always be her Danny boy. Eat your pudding, Danny boy. Poster back down, you rose. I'm not having my favourite butcher leaving me. Your sausages are the best for miles. All right, Mrs. Stanley. Percy, it just doesn't taste right. Well, you're still drinking it, aren't you? Oh, I can't see how watering down beer can contribute to the defence of the realm. Ah, uh, well... One of the few pleasures for working men like us. Yeah, all right, well, this working man is struggling for takings with these new restrictions on opening hours. What do you think, Ernie? You've been a bit quiet lately? <coughs> Reverend Moore! Okay. I didn't think vicars were permitted in public houses. <laughs> He's one of my best customers. The usual, Reverend. Uh, not right now, thank you, Mr Taylor. I'm on official duties. I'm on an important errand. Right. So what can I do for you today, then? Has Mrs Taylor left the flower arranging rotor for me? National importance. Mm -hmm. Flower arranging. <laughs> well, life still goes on, doesn't it? Indeed it does, Ernie. Excuse me, Reverend. Hmm. So, what's this all about, Buckingham? I was reading about this in the newspaper this morning. Kitchener has announced he's forming these new battalions. You can sign up with your mates and go over together. I've heard a load of boys from Morton in Marsh went over to Worcester this morning and signed up. So, what do you reckon then, boys? What would we want to do that for? <laughs> Chance to see a bit of the world, Joe. Oh yeah, that sounds a great tour with bullets whipping past your ears. <laughs> That's what this drive is all about. The average man, shoulder to shoulder with his pals, fighting for king and country. What do you think, Alfie? Oh, I don't think my Francis would be too pleased. I best talk to her first. I knew the man of the household, Alfie. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if those Morton lads have done it, we should too. The beaters at cricket, not having them showing up this village. Not the Bagley boys. Aren't we all on the same side, Alfie?
Well, there's one that won't be joining us. He might surprise you, Howie. Well, if we're going to do it, we need to do it now. We want to go over together, don't we? I'm not sure I want to go over at all. Does that mean you won't be coming with us then, Joe? Of course I'll be bloody coming. You lads ain't going to get very far without me, are you? <laughs> That's the spirit, Joe. Bagley boys together, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to disturb your prayer. Are you all right? I'm not the most regular visitor to church. <laughs> that doesn't matter, Ernest. God's house is always open, any time. You're here now. Is there anything I can do to help you? I'm struggling with this wall. and decision to sign up. I see. What exactly is troubling you? You think the same as the other men that have talked about it? The killing? Is it right? We could even take another man's life. This is a very testing time for all men. Mother doesn't want me to go. She's got her health problems and I'm the one that always looks after her. You need to weigh up your responsibilities and do what you think is best. I think what bothers me most is the shame I feel. Those women walking around and handing out white feathers to men, calling them cowards. Maybe I'm a coward. Maybe all the reasons I've given for not going are just excuses because I'm terrified. I'm terrified for my own life. It just doesn't seem fair. It's got nothing to do with us, with me. I've never shot anyone for God's sake. No need to apologise, Ernest. I can't tell you exactly what God would want you to do. What do you think we should do, Reverend? My own opinion is that we need to do everything we can to support the country during this time of war. But whether that support involves joining up or not, Only you can say, Ernest. Thank you. Hello. 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 You've heard then? Yes, Alfred, I've heard. Nothing is a secret in this village, is it? I'm sorry. You're sorry? For what? The fact that you're leaving? The fact that you didn't discuss it with your wife first? Or the fact that I heard it from Mrs. Stanley, the local herald she is. It was a spur of the moment thing, Francis. We, we all decided to sign up together down at the office. So I hear. How many pints of bitter had you drunk? Th this is war, Francis. The, the country is depending on us. People need us. I depend on you, Alfie. You're my husband. It's the right thing to do. Don't talk to me about the right thing. I've given up everything for you, for us, and now you're leaving. But 
This is bigger than two people. I suppose you have nothing to stay for. Why would you say that? I need to finish this. Ow! Just a little cut. It'll be all right. I'm scared it won't be Alf. I will come back. I can't lose you. Thank you for my new toy soldier, father. You look after them, my lad. This one looks just like you. Does he? And is that because he's brave and handsome and a terribly good soldier? No, because it's got brown hair. Well, that's enough of that, you young rascal. Thank your mother for supper and get up to bed. And don't forget to wash your face. <laughs> Good night, Mother. Good night, Father. He's very proud of you. He thinks you're going on a terribly big adventure. That's what I thought when we talked about signing up. It's starting to sink in now. I can't help wondering whether we've all gone and been rather foolish. Oh, this isn't like you, Bill. I was looking at the others in the queue at the recruiting office. Dan trips over his own feet at least once a day. Alfie's got a good head on his shoulders, but I worry he might not pull a trigger when it really comes down to it. And Kenny's only happy with a pencil in his hand. We're just ordinary simple men, Rosie. What on earth made us think we'd be good soldiers? This is why you all need to go together, so you can look out for each other. I was looking at Edkins. His wife's having another child. He should be here, really. She'll need him. Just like you need me. Well, if you don't go, Bill, if we don't win this war, then what sort of world will we be bringing the children up in anyway? <sighs> Ordinary simple men. David killed Goliath with a stone, Bill. You just remember that. You all right, Joe? You don't look like your usual cheerful self this evening. Do none of you ever get tired of this? Oh, we're only pulling your leg, Joe. Yeah, people wonder why I prefer the company of animals. Well, you practically live up those stables, Joe. Yeah, well, there won't be a need for stables much longer. What do you mean? Her ladyship's been to see me. Apparently, all able-bodied riding ponies and shire horses are required to report for duty. Oh, needs must, Joe. Aye, but it's not right. We had a choice, Dad. Nobody came to the village and forced us to join the army. We did of our own free will, but because they're horses, it makes it all right. I was wondering whether your Ivy would take Major. He's no bother. He's a good dog, really. That's a good idea, Joe. She'll enjoy the company. It might stop her from being so cross at me for signing up. And between me and you, she could do with the exercise. Are you uh, ready for our training? I can't see it doing us much good, can you? I'm looking forward to the food. A few weeks away from our Ivy's cooking. It's not a holiday, Dan, despite what you and the boys might think. Yeah, but it's a great adventure though, isn't it, Joe? See you in church tomorrow. Is he still trying to convert you, Joe? He says the same each Saturday. Every Sunday you turn up here for first orders. At least I can rely on your business, Joe. Yeah, well, not for much longer. We're off in a week.
Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me never from the Feed me now and evermore. Open now the crystal fountain, whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fiery cloud appear. I enjoyed your sermon today, Reverend. Um, very rousing. Thank you, Daniel. But I'm not sure Mr. Patterson shares your opinion. I'm sure he only comes here every Sunday to catch up on his sleep. Oh, um, if, if you'll excuse me, Daniel, I just wanted to have a word with Ernest. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, Lizzie, I was just trying to be helpful. Oh, not at all, Danny. It's, it's very kind of you. Well, have a lovely day. The conversations between you two are riveting. Do you ever stop teasing May? Leave little Lizzie alone. I thought you'd be rushing home for your Sunday lunch, Lucky Dan. Well, I was hoping if I stuck around for long enough, one of you lot might invite me back. Come on, Daniel. We need to get home for lunch. No such luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the best to your lovely wife. Mother, can I go and play pirates with Stanley? Go on, then. But mind you don't get your clothes dirty. Come on, Uncle Alfie, play with us. Ah, uh, here be a scurvy sea dog that needs to walk the plank. He loves your Alfie Francis. Alfie's always got time for him. You'll make a wonderful father one day. I know he will. Mother? Mum? Mr. Robbins? Are you coming for Sunday lunch today, Howie? My wife is an excellent cook. Oh, not today, thank you, Bill. No, I think I need to get back up to the house. I need to finish tidying up those flower beds. <laughs> I don't know how Alfie has the energy to keep up with our boys, Bill. Probably because he gets to hand them back, Ekins. Well, he is tiring them out, so I suppose I shouldn't be complaining. Speaking of complaining, if you see Joe, <laughs> can you tell him I'll be up at Brookfield this afternoon? I think he wanted some help mending the stable door. Gentlemen. Mm. Ladies. That man can make a joke of anything. No matter how terrible things are, he'd still see the funny side. Oh, would you like to come for Sunday lunch, Reverend? Bless you for thinking of me, but I'll have to give it a miss, I'm afraid. I promised to call in on old Mrs. Pritchard. She's not been very well lately, so I think she could do with a little company. Perhaps we'll see you for a tipple after Evensong, Reverend. <laughs> oh, no doubt. <laughs> Come on, you lot. Thomas here tells me there's treasure to dig for back at your house. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend. Uh, I'll see you. Good morning. Bye. Pleasure. Good morning. As always. Good morning. Good morning. Mum said you'd be down here. Bet you're going to miss all this. What? My sister bothering me while I'm fishing? Well, your bothersome sister bought you some lunch. That's why I'm here, May. It's remind me what we're fighting for. I don't want you to go. You know I have to. Why do you have to go? You see that tree? How many years do you think it stood there? Imagine if it could tell us what it's seen. In these fields. Just look at the countryside. 
It's beautiful, May. And it's ours. Not theirs. Ours. And that's why I have to go. What's Uncle John going to do without you? He relies on you to help out down the farm. Everyone's going. I don't want to be the only one who stays at home. They're older, Danny. They know what they're doing. I'm still a boy. Let them deal with it. You stay here with me and Mum. It's too late, May. I can't exactly tell them I've changed my mind. I don't know why they let you sign up. He didn't even look at me. I'll take anyone. They even took old Lucky Dan with his bad chest and his gammy leg. Danny. They've known each other since they were boys. You know? All of them. They grew up together here in this village. I saw them coming out of the pub that afternoon. When I ran over, Alfie put his arm round me and, and Bill clapped me on the back. For the first time, they accepted me as one of them. We're doing this together, May. For king and country. But most of all for this village. So, so Alfie can go back and teach in the school. So Joe can take care of his horses. So Howie can bore us with tedious facts about flowers. You've asked me, why me? What if everyone asked that? What would happen to everyday life then? Mum's going to miss you, Danny boy. So am I. Don't worry, May. It'll all be over soon. I need to get back. Mum wants you home for dinner. May, did you bring me a... Did you remember your handkerchiefs? Yes, dear. And you've got your pocket watch? Yes, dear. What about your sandwiches for the journey? Rosie, stop fretting. You've packed and repacked. I have everything I need. Take care of your mother, Thomas. You're the man of the house now. Yes, Father. Look after yourself, Bill. Make sure you write every day. I will, Rosie. Don't worry. Oh, make sure you're right, Joe. Oh. That is enough of your cheek, Howard Robinson. You lot had better take care of each other. Don't worry, I'll look out for him, Mrs. Howard. Such a sweetheart. <laughs> oh, come on. I hope Ma's going to be all right. She'll always worry about you. You'll always be her boy. You tell her it's just training. I can look after myself. It would be the same without you. I'm still incredibly cross with you. I love you too. Please come home, Alfie Peters. Oh, we were wondering where you'd got to. Have you already said your goodbyes to Ivy? Yeah. She didn't want to come down to the station. She's a little bit upset. Come along, Thomas. Give your father one last goodbye. <sighs> I will miss you, Father. You will be brave, won't you, Thomas? I will. 
You will be brave too, won't you, Father? I'll try some. I'll write as soon as I can, love. Come on, Bill. You can sit next to me. He's bringing a little bit of home with him. Well, I'm not quite sure when we'll be seeing it again. Excuse me, Reverend. Run for it, Ernie! Oh, well done, my man. We weren't expecting to see you. You don't think I'd let you go off and have all the fun without me, do you? And come back to all the glory. Well, we're certainly glad you're coming. you off to then, Lucky Dan? Latrine duty. <laughs> well, be careful, Joe's just been in there. <laughs> oh, very funny. I wouldn't mind latrine duty. Certainly make a break for the monotony of drill duty. Didn't think it'd be like this when we signed up. Wake up at 5.30, clean up, prayed for an hour and a half. Breakfast, drill all morning. Lunch, and then after lunch, just in case we haven't got it yet, Marching practice for another couple of hours. Do they not realise that fighting this war involves firing guns at each other? Well, as long as the Germans have been using the nice wooden ones we've been practising with, we'll be all right, won't we? The quartermaster said it's going to be three weeks before we are issued with rifles. Three weeks? It's the endless trivial tasks that get me. Clean your kit, dub your boots. And all the incoherent shouting. I literally do not understand it. It's not all bad. We have a fully stocked library to use whenever we have a break from our duties. Yeah, yes, I miss the pub too. At least we've got proper uniforms. I thought we were going to be stuck with those blue postman's uniforms. Hey, there's nothing wrong with looking like a postman. Cardboard badges. Anyway, I heard that uh, next week they're going to start sending us on night operations. Oh, so if ever I'm stranded without a weapon within reach of the enemy in the middle of the night, then this training will come in handy. All oh, this complaining, you've been spending far too long with Joe. We're going to be back in the pub in a couple of days. Kenny, how do you know all this? I listened at the briefing. <laughs> We're meant to listen. <laughs> do you take nothing seriously, Howie? Yes. Dinner. Francis. Francis, stop. I've made up my mind, Rosie. I'm going. Why are you doing this? Alfie says we all need to do our bit. It's not the reason. He didn't want Alfie to go and do his bit. It's hard to believe that you now want to go and serve king and country. It's all right for you, Rosie. You have your family. We weren't blessed like you and Bill with children. I cut off the rest of my family to be with Alfie. Without him, what have I got left? I can't just sit here and wait. You can get involved and help with things here. 
Why'd you have to go so near to the danger? The field hospitals are far enough behind the line to be out of any danger. I'm trained as a nurse. It seems such a waste. I didn't think they'd take a married woman. I haven't told them. So long as the men are being cared for by a trained doctor, nurse or surgeon, what does it matter? It's not the place for you. I need to go, Rosie. Someone has to do this job, and I have the skills. What if, heaven forbid, something happened to Bill? Would you want him to be alone, waiting in line for someone to help because there's a shortage of people to care for the men? Or would you feel comforted that there are women there waiting to do their job? and they would care for those men as they would their own husbands and brothers. I need to do this. I'll write to you. I'll send you what I can. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Get what you need there, Mrs Stanley, or should we start again? I'm sorry I'm late, Reverend. I was um, talking to Rosie and Francis in the village. Well, that's perfectly all right. Uh, can you come and sit down, please, Mrs. Stanley? I'd like to have a word with you. Uh, what's the matter, Reverend? Have I done something wrong? I have some news for you. I shall be going away shortly. Where are you going to, Reverend? France, I expect. I don't understand. Whilst enlisting as a soldier is something that is not approved of by the church for those of us who have sought holy orders, we can serve in other ways. Yes, but Reverend... Oh, some of my congregation are out there fighting. I want to be there to support them. They need me. And I have to go and do my bit. The community here is going to be looking to the church. And you need to keep it a welcoming, safe place for people until another reverend is assigned to the parish. Can you do that for me, Mrs. Stanley? I wouldn't trust anyone else with this. Right. I'd better get on. Silver won't polish itself. Yes, uh, of course. And thank you, Mrs. Stanley. Stanley and Thomas are settling in with their new teacher. But they still miss Alfie. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Miss White is trying to help the children understand why there's so many changes in the village. She has the children involved in fundraising, and the rest is just family news. It's good to hear that things are carrying on in the village, but strange that they're carrying on without us. Mm. Well, I'm sure the village cricket team's managed to replace Joe as opening batsman by now. Mm. You never know. Bucky might have actually won a game. <laughs> Where is Joe, anyway? He's over in the field helping Lucky Dan burn at those sacks. <laughs> Hoping by the end of the week, Dan might actually manage to make contact with one. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I know who I want to be standing next to when the action starts. Danny Boy is the finest shot I've ever seen. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, at least one of us has got a good aim, then. <laughs> These are your lads. <laughs> That's our sergeant. Good luck, Sergeant. Yeah, thanks very much. I need it. Oh, watch out, boys. He's coming over. Uh, relax, lads. Carry on with your lunch. I just want to come over and meet my newest recruits. Hey, you just come back from there, Sergeant. You're very well informed, lad. Orders came from Italian HQ for me to be reassigned. So it's my job to look after you lot to make sure you get through it. Get through it, sir? That's Sergeant. Son. 
Sorry, sir. S Sergeant. I don't know what you've heard about the conditions over there, but it's not going to be easy. But if you boys keep your heads down and do everything I tell you, you'll be all right. When are we moving out, Sergeant? Won't be long now. Wouldn't be too keen to get out there if I were you. Make the most of your dry clothes, hot meals and warm beds while you got them. Right. I'll meet you boys at Driller 0800 tomorrow morning. Sergeant. 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 You finally finished it? Finished? That letter? You've been writing it for ages. Anyway, Francis, hurry up. Matron's just called a roll. I would like to welcome you to number three, Casualty Clearing Station. It's not the nicest welcome, I grant you. But all the same, we are here to do our jobs. The men here need us. And even though we are not used to working in these conditions, I know that you will continue to do your best as you have back at home. Our duties remain the same. The surroundings just make things a little, a little more challenging. But you are all competent nurses with plenty of knowledge and experience. So we must rally together and make the best of it. Report to your stations. You are dismissed. Good morning. Oh, hello. Another new face. I think I'm your roommate. Well, Ted mate. <laughs> are you Nurse Parker? Yes, Abigail Parker. Pleased to meet you. Victoria Lewis. And over there is Frances Higgins. She's our other tent mate. She arrived last week. Doesn't say much, though. She seems to spend most of her time huddled over a desk with a pen in her hand. However, she doesn't actually seem to write anything. Nurse Lewis, it would seem that you are of the opinion that gossiping with your colleagues is an integral part of your daily duties. I trust that you are setting Nurse Parker a good example. Yes, Matron. And how about you, Nurse Parker? Are you ready to do your bit for King and Country? Oh, yes, Matron. I'm ready to do everything that I can to help our boys. I'm delighted to hear it. Now report to your stations at once. Is she a tough sort? Matron is all right. To be honest, I've worked under a lot worse. She's seen us through some hard times and she's made this hospital what it is. It's terribly exciting to be so close to the front line. That's exactly what I used to think. Have you been out here long? About six months. I was fortunate enough to be stationed here when the casualties started coming in from Ypres. My first patient was a boy of only 19. He came in with a shrapnel wound to the chest. He was screaming in pain and died a few hours later. Any idea that this was some sort of great adventure soon disappeared after that. It's difficult work, Nurse Parker, but at least our efforts will make their suffering a little more bearable. Francis. This is Abigail Parker. She's our new bunkmate. It's good to meet you, Nurse Higgins. Pleased to meet you. Excuse me. See what I mean? I've been sharing a tent with her for almost a week now, and I still know hardly anything about her. Oh, 
It's cold out here, Mum. Thought you might find use for this. I never tire of this view, Henry. Is it not the most beautiful view in the county? You are very blessed, Mum. I do not know how anyone could give away such a privilege as this. Perhaps for a greater gift, my lady. However, shall we manage with regard to the running of the land, Henry? There is talk in the village of uprooting your flower garden and turning it into a huge vegetable patch to feed the masses. Surely not. That will never do. My beautiful garden has stood for... Henry, you are a demon. After all these years, you never But in all faint. seriousness, there is call for extra land. A food shortage will follow now. With the men leaving the village, who do they expect will be farming the land? There is a group of local ladies that... Women? Yes, yes. Headed by Mrs Beach. She'll soon have them organised. The world's going mad, Henry. Indeed it is. They will be looking to you now, ma'am. The villagers. They'll be looking to you to lead the way. I've instructed Cook to send food parcels to the men who were in my employment. We will send what we can. I've heard news that homes like yours... It's your home are... too, Henry. Never forget that. That homes like this are being used for the rehabilitation of the men at uh, nursing homes and the like. You believe that opening our home would be of benefit, Henry? I'm sure it would be of great benefit, ma'am. Well then, Henry, we shall open up the west wing of Brookfield House. It shall be a beacon for those who need it. Ma'am. the men in, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Right, lads. You heard the officer. Get off your lazy backsides and fall in. Three ranks. What are you doing here, Everett? I'm coming with you for the time being. I'm sure that Bible will come in very handy when we're going over the top, Reverend. <laughs> Section properly at ease. Section button. Shut! We have just received our orders to go to the front line. I know, like me, you're desperate to get stuck into the Germans, and I know you'll all do your duty for king and country. We're going to be moving up to Ypres to relieve the second battalion, Duke of Wellington's regiment, a company of which should be here very shortly. Those brave men have been at the front line doing their job for the past three weeks, and now it's our turn. Welcome to France, gentlemen. Sergeant. It's a long way Section slow bombs! It's a long right, lads. Go gather up your belongings and be ready to march out in ten minutes. Officer on parade. To your duties for help!
I didn't think we'd be going up to the front so soon. After all that training, we're finally going to see some real action. Yeah. So where's the rest of you? This is it. Bloody hell. Three weeks? Looks like they've been out there for three months. Good luck, lads. We bloody well need it. Welcome to France, Bill. 